Hi everyone, Tori here with something fun, a how-to video on how to use the We Are Memory Keeper Photo Fuse, which is my brand new tool and I'm super psyched about it. And it was so much fun to play with that I thought it would be fun for you if I made a how-to video because I know many of you are probably purchasing this or trying to decide whether to purchase it and I just love it so I thought it would be really fun to make a how-to video. So um, I'm gonna I'm just showing you the packaging that it comes in. It comes in a plastic box with the instructions. It comes with the fuse tool. It comes with a stand and it comes with a ruler that you can use to do the fusing. And then it also comes with a cutting tool which I'll just grab so that I can show you. The really awesome thing about this is if you've watched any of my Project Life videos, you know that I often cut up the page protectors to make them smaller, to make inserts or whatever. And I have so many extra pieces left over from all the things that I've cut up. So now I can use all those extra pieces to make um, shaker pockets and shaker cards and other super fun thing, which I'm gonna try to make um, other photo fuse idea videos maybe. Um, just to give you some ideas, or you'll see them in some of my um, scrapbooking and Project Life videos. So, it's such a fun tool. It's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's not that difficult to learn. And um, I can, I'm just going to show you how I used it. So, the first thing I did was I grabbed some embellishments, some buttons, a uh, resin flower, a die cut, and a bunch of sequins. And I'm just going to stick those all into this little pocket. So this pocket was cut out from a leftover um, piece from a Project Life page that I had cut up. So I cut up the um, page and then I decided to just use the extras. And I have so many pages like that because I really like just cutting up the papers. And it's easier for me to buy the Design A or Design D page protectors from Project Life and cut those into inserts than it is for me to buy the inserts. In Canada, it's not always cheaper to buy inserts. It's it's actually cheaper to buy the big, huge packs of page protectors, like Design A, and then to cut those into my own size inserts. And now that I have the photo views, it makes it even easier. So I stuck all the embellishments in. Then I'm trying to line up the ruler, and I did practice this before I got on the screen, but the one thing that I found is that once you stick the embellishments in, if you have really bulky embellishments, it can make it harder for um, you to do the page. And I also really struggle with the ruler. Like, I struggle to see how to line it up. Like, because it's silver, you can't see through it and you can't see where the end of the pocket is. So... Um, what you saw me do was I ended up just using the edge of the ruler instead of the line on the ruler and that worked except for I still made it crooked. So I think it's going to take a little more practice for me to figure out how to keep it straight. Um, part of the problem is that the mat that I normally use for scrapbooking, which is the We Are Memory Keepers um, magnetic mat that you see underneath, it's pink, is um, like it has a plastic coating on it. So you can't use the fuse tool on that. You need to use it like on a heat resistant or glass mat or just on some paper. So all of the things I've been making so far, which I'm showing you some of the shaker pockets I've already made, um, I made them just on paper. So I think I need to get a glass mat. And if I got a glass mat with um, ruler lines on it, it probably would be easier to line things up. So that's going to be next on my to-do purchase list <laughs> but um, I mean sometimes I made them pretty straight and one of the things I found was I actually can do it straighter without the tool so um, I sometimes use it without the ruler so you just have to find what works for you and I think practice is one of those things that just makes perfect so I'm just showing you, I made a whole bunch of shaker cards with a whole bunch of sequins, buttons, wood veneer. Also made this 4x6 um, thing where I did strips of sequins in different colors and that was sort of fun to make. I made a like um, bookmark which is just a little thinner, I think it's 2x6 
and I just stuck some confetti and a wood veneer piece in there. And you can even make different shapes other than straight. You just don't use the ruler, you just use your eye to do it. So I made a circle, which I'm not sure what I'll use that for. Maybe a um, card. I saw some really cool um, cards that use the We Are Memory Keepers Fuse to create shaker pockets instead of having to use all that um, dimensional tape. So um, I can't wait to try something like that. I have been um, saving a whole bunch of photos and ideas um, for some Fuse inspiration on my Pinterest board and I'll line up the Pinterest board below if you're interested in seeing some other ideas. I thought it would be fun to show you some other things that you can make um, and just, just give you some other inspiration ideas and see, show you how easy it is. So I'm grabbing a 4x6 um, pocket and I grabbed this Project Life card. I cut it in half diagonally and just stick that into the corner. And I'm going to make a two diagonal spots in this pocket. So I also found that if I use my regular ruler, which is longer, it's 12, it's like, I don't know, it's bigger than 12 by 12, that you can reach a bigger spot because the um, ruler that came with the fuse tool is sort of small. So if you use a larger ruler, it works well too. So I use the photo fuse to go along that one side and then I'm going along the um, left hand side and then I'll stick in the sequins and then I'll do the top. Um, a couple other things I've learned along the way from practicing is um, that I find it easier to pull the tool than it is to push the tool. So when I use the fuse tool, fuse tool, you'll probably see me moving from like left to right rather than um, right to left. I, I just found that that was easier for me to be consistent because you want to keep a one fluid motion and you want to keep it pretty consistently moving. So again, you're seeing me there do it left to right rather than the other way. The other thing I learned is that if you miss a spot, you can sort of see it because there's like little perforated dots. So if you miss a spot, you can just go over it again. And you want to be careful when you're making sequin pockets that you don't miss a spot because like I did there, I missed one and then I shook it and then all the sequins came out. So just going over it again. Um, you can eyeball it too. I mean, you can't be as straight as when you use a ruler. But it's sort of fun. So there's the pocket I made. It has um, the two sides. And on a side note, because I know I'll get questions from this, I store my sequins in this really cool like um, storage compartment thing that I got at um, the Dollar Store or Dollarama um, here in Stouffville. I don't know if you have one of those near you, but this was in like the jewelry making section. And it's really awesome for storing all of my sequins. You can also um, make pockets that aren't perfectly square and put sort of whatever ephemera and whatever embellishments you want into the pocket. So I'm just going to show you a sample of that here. I mean, it's not really super planned out, so it's not that amazing. But it just gives you an idea of how you can do it. I just grabbed a whole bunch of little tiny bits and tags and scrap paper and everything and you stick one piece in then you run the photo fuse along it like I grab that tag and I put that in there then you grab the next piece and you put it in there and you just go around it and I'm eyeballing it rather than using the ruler just because I found it faster for me but you could use the ruler and then it would be straighter and it wouldn't probably buckle um, as much as mine did because I wasn't really Holding it down that great, I was just sort of fusing along it. Um, one thing you do want to think about, though, is that once you fuse it, it stays in there. Like, you can't get it out. Well, I guess you could if you cut it, um, but it's in there. So you want to try to think about both sides of the page protector, because otherwise you're just going to have nice things on the one side, and then the other side will be white, which is what I was trying to show you. But, I mean, there's so many possibilities, and I think the more that I practice, the better I get. So, I'm excited to see what I can come up with. 
I thought it would be fun before I finish today to just make a um, Project Life insert with you um, and to show you some possible ideas. So I cut off a ton of these page protectors from my Design A or Design D page protectors. So then I have a piece that is, it's 12 by 6, right? And it doesn't fit or it doesn't go into my albums because it doesn't have holes. Well, you could create your own holes. So what I did was I fused along the side that was cut open. Then I moved the ruler over about an inch and then I fused again. Then I grabbed my hole punch and lining it up with another page protector, I can put the holes exactly where they need to be so that this insert will line up perfectly in my album. So it's like I've made my own custom size insert. Now the 4x6 and 3x4 slots won't be perfect anymore because I've cut off about um, half an inch on the one side. But that's okay, you just make custom cards for those or you just cut the cards that you have um, to fit the right size. And there's so many possibilities for how you can decorate the pockets that you have. So, for example, I thought it would be fun to turn the two 3x4 slots in the middle into, like, four slots that were um, smaller. And the other problem was that this uh, page protector had got bent in the box that I put all my extra pieces in. So I just trimmed off the top and made the top a little smaller. So it's probably now about 11 by 6 And that's fine, I'll just cut down some Project Life cards. So... Here I am grabbing some Project Life cards that I can use and I'm just trying to figure out what to put in there. I'm not going to put any photos in and make an actual spread, I just wanted to show you sort of how the whole process would work and what it would look like. Now since I had cut off about half an inch on the side, I have to cut down all the cards to make sure that they fit inside the pockets. But it's super easy to do. You just measure it. Or you round your corners if you like to, because I love my round corners. And then you just stick everything in. And it works so well. I feel like my brain is like filled with endless ideas of how I could use this photo fuse to make my own custom pockets, my own custom um, page protectors. And if you've watched my process videos, you know that I don't really like having the same page protector all the time. I like mixing it up and I like altering things and using everything. So I love that I have this great opportunity now to alter things the way that I want. And I also have this great opportunity to use everything. Like all those scraps that I've been cutting off the top of um, the, my page protectors or the sides of my page protectors because I wanted a smaller page protector. I saved all of those. I didn't know what I was saving them for, but I saved them all. And so now I have a whole box of these like page protectors that are perfect to play with and to use my photo fuse on. So there's a wonderful idea for you and um, I hope that you learn something and I hope that you pull out your photo fuse and play with it. Or if you're thinking about getting it, that maybe you do because it's super awesome. Anyways, that's it for now. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye, everybody.